Hey y'all, so we just got back from a long weekend in Fort Worth for Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there, especially my mother-in-law and my own mom. But you can see behind me that there are some plants. I wanna get the front window box planted uh, today. I will be adding all of these perennials that you see behind me and I'll go through those here in just a second. I didn't get annuals because I haven't totally decided what annuals that I'll be planting in the front yet. And whatever I plant in the main front will carry over to this window box right back here. So you can see I got my gorilla, uh, excuse me, kangaroo bag over here is the gorilla cart. And we'll just go ahead and knock that out. It won't take long. There's some boxwoods and some other stuff in that window box that I will be removing. The bulbs will be just going in the compost and then the boxwoods will be saved for a later use. But while I'm up here, I wanted to give you guys an overview of the front yard because it looks a lot different compared to the last time that I did a tour of the front yard. And the whole front yard will be changing at some point, but between the backyard and the front yard, uh, it's gonna take us years for everything uh, to get done exactly how we want it. And that's okay, it's a process, and we'll have plenty to show you guys along the way. So let's just turn around and take a look at the current front yard, and I'll explain to you some changes uh, that have been made up here recently before we get to the window box. So let's just turn around and take a look. All right, so before we get to the current state of the front yard. Just a few updates up here. So we added a flag, which I particularly love. The flag holder was already there, but Tommy put one up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this light that was right here, it was broken and it rattled really bad in the wind. So we ordered a new, a little bit more modern, uh, a little bit more chic that matched the color of the trim. And I really, really like it. Tommy just switched that out a second ago. You can see we need some mortar work done there. Um, that is on the books. Hopefully, hopefully soon we will see, but these houses require lime mortar. So the old, the old bricks, uh, they don't, they didn't use cement mortar back then. Just a little bit of a, a tip for you guys that don't know or that don't live in an old house. So all of this mortar is lime based mortar. So the bricks back in the day were softer and that is the mortar that they used back in the day. So anytime we do any sort of mortar work on the outside of our house, we try to keep with the historic uh, guidelines and suggestions. So we'll be getting that done soon. Here is what the window box looks like currently. Looks a little bit sad. We'll be removing the pansies, obviously. We'll be removing the boxwoods, saving those, and then all of the bulbs will be removed. And here is kind of a general overview of the front yard. I think it's looking really pretty with all of the self-seeded flowers that are up here. Uh, mostly larkspur, white lace flower, some poppies, and some columbine are up here. You can see this poppy right here. It's huge, it's like four feet tall. And while I love poppies and I think they're beautiful, I don't love red. So I might be removing this poppy, but I will be saving some seeds to plant out in the raised bed area for future. And I will be ordering some poppy seeds uh, for next spring in obviously purples and pinks in my color palette. So looks drastically different than the last time that I showed the front yard. Here is some columbine up here. It's one of the few yellow colors that remain. The fever few has pretty much fizzled out. Some of the sedum down below here still has the yellow blooms but it's mostly purple and white you can see here that i haven't removed the pansies yet that is on the list for to do's but i haven't decided what annual i'm going to plant up here for color just yet i think i will go with petunias because i really like petunias you can buy fewer of them because they get so large um probably super tunias honestly um but we deal with budworms so bad here that i just really don't know if i want to fight the budworms last summer we planted white petunias at the other house and I just battled the budworms all year long, all summer long. Um, some foxglove there, right here. For those of you guys that don't know, foxglove is very, very poisonous to humans and animals. Tucker doesn't come up here much and he doesn't show any interest in it. So I'm really happy about that. I try not to plant anything that is poisonous to animals, but I mean, the list is quite long. So honestly, thankfully Tucker doesn't typically mess with anything. He doesn't chew on a lot of stuff. So 
I would consider ourselves pretty safe on that. So you guys might notice something missing right here and roughly right in here. So there was a viburnum here and there was a holly here. Um, my gardening style is I don't like anything to obstruct the front of the house. The reason we live here is because we love the architecture of the house and I want to be able to see it. So this viburnum took up a, a, quite a bit of area up there so we removed that and that wasn't salvageable. And then the holly that was removed over here was a fairly large holly and I really wanted to uh, remove it and transfer it to the back. But unfortunately, there are some electric and water lines over here in this area and it was just too much of a risk to attempt to transplant. So it just got removed. I'm not, a, I don't like to do that because it was a fairly large holly and I really wanted to save the money and repurpose it in the back, but it just wasn't worth the risk of what we could tear up. Uh, underneath the ground digging it up and still risking that it may not survive anyway I think this is a really pretty view right here you can see some pink there mixed in but you know these these are just all self-seeded flowers mostly and the larkspur just goes crazy and does so well up here. This side of the yard just looks a little bit different. And there is some pink over here. So most of the color palette when things change up here, as things start to change up here, will go to mostly pinks and purples. And I will continue to let the self-seeded plants come up in the future. There is some white yarrow back there. I got some pink yarrow the other day and I really, really like it. So I'll probably add that up in here as well. I think that will give it a pretty pop of pink and it's a pretty tough plant here. So something else, let's take a look at the tree. The tree is doing so well. I'm My heart is so happy about that. Leafed out looking great, no signs of chlorosis, no signs of anything crazy seems to have totally taken the borer treatment extremely well that's something i was pretty worried about so i'm really really happy about that the maple over here and the other oak both leafed out looking really really pretty this front gets quite a bit of shade from those three trees and so when we go to change things we will be keeping that in mind but over the years, most of this front will change. And I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's beautiful right now, but it's just not my style. So I'm really looking forward to getting some things changed up here, but it's probably going to be a while. At least, probably, I don't know. We still have so much stuff to do in the back that I don't even know if it will be this coming fall or if it will have to wait until after that. We will see. Okay, so something else is the gate. So the people that made our gate knocked it out of the park and we're still waiting for the opener, but so, so happy with the gate. It is roughly five feet high by 11 wide. And I just wanted something, I know I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I just wanted something that was a little bit more modern, a little bit more streamlined. And so I think they just really, really nailed it. I'm super happy with that. We aren't super concerned with our dogs. Obviously our golden retriever can't get out. Our dachshund can easily fit under this. Our neighbor's elevation is higher. And so that is as low as we could get that gate without adjusting all of this elevation over here on the neighbor's side. But it works It works totally fine, Richard. He doesn't try to escape, so I don't particularly worry about that. Um, okay, well, I think that's pretty much it as far as updates on the front. Like I said earlier, not a lot has happened, but let's just go ahead and I will set up my camera. We'll go over some of these plants that I'm planting. You can see here, you're probably thinking there's not that many plants over there. And you're right, 
there aren't. I'm trying to practice some restraint with all of the plants that we need for the back update and the front update. I'm just trying to practice a little bit of restraint, which is easier said than done, not to pack this thing totally full. And when I decide on the annuals that I'll be planting up here, I will also be planting those same annuals over here so we will see I we haven't had many sunny days lately and I really need to pay attention um, to the lighting that this gets um, midday I think we will be able to it's pretty shady in the front with all of the trees but I think we will be able to get away with some petunias in the front I don't know we'll see to be determined but I'll be practicing restraint here and then we'll be adding the same annuals that I add in the front landscape to this window box as well. And that's another reason why I don't have a ton of plants down there. So let's just get my camera set up and we'll get to planting this, uh, this window box. Okay, so let's just go ahead and take a look at the four variety of plants that I'll be planting in this window box. These are all perennials. So every year I will plant on just allowing these to come back and probably be obviously planting some tulips in there, but allowing these perennials to come back and then just updating with annuals uh, every season. So once, once I show you these plants, we'll get all of these other plants taken out and then I'll be removing some soil as well because it's a little bit full and every time I go to water, it spills over the edge. So we'll do that as well, but let's just go ahead and take a look at some of these plants. So Dulce Wildberry Hookera sun to shade. The height is 10 to 14 on these guys. Most of you guys are probably super familiar with hookeras and they do so well for us here in our area and I love this deep purple. Painted Japanese fern. It's a shade plant. 12 to 8 uh, excuse me, 8 to 12 high and 12 to 18 wide. Um, most of you guys probably remember that I planted these in the back window box and they are slow growing, but they're starting to fill in back there. And this tiny blue mouse ears hosta. I really like this. It's a uh, shade and then 6 to 7 high and 12 wide. So it stays relatively small. I think it's really, really cute. And then lastly is going to be the variegated vinca. Just needed a trailer in the front up here. So those are the only four varieties that I'll be planting. And then we'll be planting uh, annuals in there for each season as well, including tulips, pansies, and then whatever I decide to plant out in the landscape um, this season. And then I also need to show you guys the back window box. It's starting to fill in and it's starting to look really good. Let's get this cleaned out. Let's get these boxwoods out and put in a gorilla cart to save and get some soil removed. And then we'll get to planting.
actually gonna go get a little flathead screwdriver and try to get some of this dirt out from in between uh, the metal casing on the inside of this window box and this actual window ledge. So you can see here that these are two, sorry for the shaky camera work. These are two separate window boxes and there was just some soil back behind here and the bottom of this, there is a protector, um, a piece of wood that protects the house, but I just didn't want the uh, damp soil to be sitting on that and the supports underneath are also wood and I just don't want those to rot out. So I cleaned all of that out from back behind there I still need to do a little bit of cleaning here once I get these planted, but I removed some of the soil so we won't have any of that spillover. So let's just go ahead and get started on the planting. And I also realized once we got home that I do not have any plant tone. So tomorrow I will be running to get plant tone and I will mix that in to this soil once I get it. So I'm not not putting it in there. I just don't have any right now. Okay, so let me show you guys what I have set up here. Let me move this bag. Okay, so again, I'm trying to go minimal on the plants because I know these will all fill in. And I didn't even realize until I was just cleaning this window box out that these were two uh, separate basins. So we will squeeze these in as close as we can get to the center line to make these plants look as centered as possible. And then anywhere you see some open space will be filled with annuals at some point. Let's get to planting. I don't expect any of these plants to be really root bound, but I'll just rough them up just a touch. I don't think it's totally necessary unless they are just totally root bound.
Okay, now I'm just trying to decide where I want to put the hostas, and I think that they will go right there. Okay, so this is the final. I need to get it cleaned up just a little bit. And I know it looks pretty sparse right now, but it will all fill in. This is all the dirt that was in between the box and the barrier of the house. So I'll get that cleaned up. We'll get everything kind of blown off and I'll give you guys a close up shot. All right, here is the final product. I really, really like these little mouse ear hostas and they're getting ready to bloom. The painted fern, the veining of the painted fern plays on the purple of the heuchera. And I think once everything matures, it'll look really, really pretty together. I wanted some variegated vinca in there uh, for the white aspect of it because there'll be plenty of white, purple, and pinks in the front landscape eventually. So there it is. And once, like I had mentioned earlier and a couple other times, once we decide on the annuals for the front, some annuals will just be popped in some of those empty spots to fill in. And these are all perennials for our area. So with the exception of the Vinca probably won't come back, but everything else should. And then uh, we won't have to do this every year and we can just add pops of annual color, which is the goal always. So. Let's go back in the back and also take a look at that window box that we planted hmm, probably a month and a half ago at this point. Well, here is the back window box. It's starting to fill in really, really nicely. I love the airy wispiness that the wire vine provides. It's starting to go crazy back here in this window box and everything's just looking really good. The painted Japanese ferns there, the fire hostas, I think that's the name of them. I'll have to double check that. Purple velvet plant, Dale Strain Heuchera, uh, a variety of Heucherella, I'm not sure what it is. It was there when we moved in. But overall looking really good. I'm super happy with it. Wire vine is one of my absolute favorite plants after maidenhair ferns. So everything's looking really good. This one over here is starting to kind of drape over the side, but very, very pleased with that. And I hope within a month's time, the front window box will start to look like that as well. So as you can see, we are running out of daylight. I don't know if I will get this video posted today. I am filming it on Mother's Day. So I'll say happy late Mother's Day just in case I don't get this video posted tonight. But uh, that's all that we have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be doing the setting of the hanging basket uh, probably this weekend. We intended to do that today as well, but we got back a little bit later than anticipated. So that is all we have. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good one.